The madness was in full swing today, and that includes the Auburn Tigers hoping to make their first Sweet 16 in 15 years. It was a battle of the Tigers for a spot in Omaha. Plus, he rifles it right in front of us to Abdul Rahman at midcourt. Extra pass. And it goes for the win! The three-pointer by Jordan Poole! Is there anything better than March Madness? Welcome back to The Last Call. I'm your host, Justin Holbrock. We don't need much reason to sit on the couch all day and watch as our brackets slowly disappoint us, but this year has meant a little more for local fans especially fans of the Auburn Tigers. Despite its lowest scoring game this season, Auburn was able to su survive in round one. It was their first tournament win since 2003, and they had a chance to move on to the Sweet 16 with a win over number five Clemson today. The Tigers were trying to give Bruce Pearl a present for his birthday in this battle of the Tigers. Marquise Reed dribbling up the court. He finds Anthony Oliver for the corner three. Clemson up 15 points. Auburn barely averaging a point a minute. It wouldn't get better. Clemson up 20 now. Power move from Elijah Thomas. And one. He's flexing on him. Got that smile. He should be. Auburn went several minutes without a basket. Then later on in the second half, Gabe DeVoe pulls up from the top of the key. And it's nothing but net. This one is getting ugly. How about one more for good measure? It's DeVoe again. This time from the S in madness. Clemson just destroys Auburn. 84 to 53. And the Tigers are heading to the Sweet 16 for the first time since 1997 while Auburn's historic season comes to an end. This is where we won our basketball program. I have no seniors. No seniors. We're the second youngest team in the SEC behind Kentucky. I feel good about the foundation of, of our program. Um, and, I, and these kids have been amazing us all season long. Tonight, we just got overwhelmed. Size was a factor. And, um, we made mistakes that would certainly contributed to Clemson's success, and that's on us. But it doesn't take away from the championship season. Despite the loss, there is still plenty to be excited about if you're an Auburn fan. Like Coach Pearl said, this team is returning every single player from this team. Plus, they might be getting back Austin Wiley and Daniel Purifoy, depending on how the FBI investigation plays out. Another Auburn team surpassing expectations is the baseball team. Coming into the year, the Tigers were ranked as the 35th best team in the country. But after starting 16-1, and the Tigers leaped to 13th in the polls. This past weekend was the team's first games against an SEC team, and it came against one of the best teams in the entire country in number six Texas A&M. But the Tigers showed just how good they are. On Friday, one week after throwing a no-hitter, Casey Mize dominated again, tossing 13 strikeouts while only giving up one run and a 4-1 to one win. The next day, Auburn scored eight runs in the eighth inning to come back and top the Aggies 11-5. to five. They lost today, but won the series against a top-10 team. I can stand before my team and say I think you can compete with anybody in the country. Um, so they should have that confidence. A good reminder uh, that for these next nine weeks, just like this weekend, you're matched athletically. So it comes down to you keeping your wits about you. It comes down to your gamesmanship. It comes down to moments. It comes down to execution. But I took a, a lot of faith out of this weekend. With Huge. I mean, we harp on winning every series. And to do that on Saturday, it means a lot. We're getting closer and closer. We're getting stronger. I don't think there's a worry at any point in that dugout, bullpen, locker room. And I just think that's something strong we can keep moving forward. Tigers have one road game at Georgia Tech on Tuesday, followed by a huge three-game series against number four Kentucky next weekend. More on that series later on in the show. Time to run it back. Alabama saw its season come to an end after falling to number one Villanova uh, yesterday. The Crimson Tide won their first tournament game since 2004 on Thursday and shared their thoughts of what this year has meant for the program. Alabama's road to the Final Four ends here in Pittsburgh. Avery Johnson believes there are big things ahead for this program, and he praised the players and coaches who helped to put Tide basketball back on the map. I am so proud of our team, and I told them that in the locker room. Uh, a lot of, you know, all of our players and coaches and staff, um, Alabama wasn't their only option. They had options to go and play and go to school and work up places all over the country, but they made a decision to come to Alabama, and because of that decision, Alabama basketball is in a better place than where it was several years ago. Honestly, I feel like we proved a lot. Um, starting with SEC tournament, I feel like we had heart. 
we show people that we got heart and we don't give up. We, was, we lost five straight and we came back from that and um, we made it here. And everybody counted us out and I feel like we, just, we just kept fighting and we kept pushing. Sexton's not worried about the NBA. He's focused on a 4.0. Now, his father told me he loves college, and if he chooses to come back, there's a pretty good chance you see Bama back in the big dance next year. Reporting from Pittsburgh, I'm Arn Anderson. Back to you. If he chooses to go, he's probably a top 10 pick in the NBA. Very few things are better than the first weekend of March Madness. We get 48 games in the span of four days, and there's always the Cinderella no one saw coming, and the buzzer beaters we can't stop talking about. Here's a look back at the best moments of madness from rounds one and two. He rifles it right in front of us to Abdul Rahman at midcourt. Extra pass. And it goes for the win! The three-pointer by Jordan Poole! One time out there. Comes the player of the year, the MPC rises. No timeouts for Tennessee. Bone rises. And the dream is alive. Loyola rambling on to the Sweet 16. For a minute to play. That, the penetration. Step back. Let him go. Cody Martin, step back two, is short. Rebound to Hall. They got to get the last shot. Hall gets the bounce. And that is it. Nevada Really giving the referees a piece of his mind. Struggs' his pass is picked off. Forrest has it. And another one is done. Xavier Knapp. Of this persistent performance. Fire three more by Lamar. And a timeout's coming. Nobody's going to forget where they were when UMBC knocked off a one seed. Incredible. Georgia's not, the, not in the tournament, but the Bulldogs do have a new head coach. The school announced it has hired Tom Crean to replace Mark Fox as the team's next coach. Crean coached at Marquette and in Indiana for nine seasons at both schools. During that time, Crean had a total of 356 wins and made nine NCAA tournament appearances, which include one Final Four with Marquette and three straight Sweet 16 appearances at Indiana. The contract is for six years and $3.2 million. Not bad. And the values that were instilled in me as a young coach, as a, as a person growing up, the same values that were instilled in Joni, we have tried to instill into every person that has come through our grasp as far as player, as far as staff, and that is to hold people responsible and accountable for the greatness that is inside of them. Doesn't mean that everything worked out beautifully, but it does mean that every day we were trying to put our best foot forward to help people put their best foot forward. Fox was fired last Saturday. While basketball teams are traveling all over the country for March Madness, the Columbus State women's soccer team just left the U.S. for England on Friday. The women are across the pond for a nine-day trip where they're going to play four games against teams like Tottenham and Crystal Palace. Aside from their games, the Cougars will also watch Leicester take on Chelsea and have several days to tour London. We caught up with the team before they left. Get lost. Like, just get lost into the city. Like, when we're going to visit, like, just try new things. Don't be scared. Don't go to your same old habits. Like, just have fun. Like, just soak up all the experience you can get because it passes by so fast, but you just want to enjoy it, like, to the maximum. Like, I just think it's going to be very, not only just for soccer-wise, but also just, like, culture-wise. going to be such a great experience. Gosh, just uh, experience the culture overall. It's, uh, it's to me, it's once in a lifetime. The Cougars traveled twice to Europe before in 2010 and 2014. 
Local action earlier today. The CSU baseball team has won 14 straight and was going for 15 this afternoon. Vincent Adana hits it right back up the middle, and that brings two runners home. The Cougars are down 4 0 in the first inning, but CSU fought back quickly. In the third inning, Justin Evans up at the plate with the liner. It gets past the shortstop's glove, and Turner Vincent is putting on the Jets, trying to beat the throw. Yeah, he's got plenty of time. CSU is down one run now. And then number 22, Austin Farr, rips it up the middle. And in come two runners for the Cougars. CSU up 5-4, to four, and they would go on to win 11-5. to five. That's 15 in a row. Wow. The last call is just getting started. Coming up, we're walking off on the Plains in style. It's a hero behind the Auburn victory over Alabama. Plus, the Columbus Lions are back and looking to avenge last year's championship loss. We'll give you an inside look at this year's team right after the break. Believe it or not, we're less than a month away from football games. The Columbus Lions, who have made three straight championship appearances, are back in action getting ready for another season. Brendan Robertson has more on the team for this week's Sports Spotlight. The Columbus Lions were one botch snap from winning the National Arena League Championship last season. Back for his 12th season as head coach, Jason Gibson expects to once again compete for the championship. And that starts with preseason camp. I think this year we're going to focus a lot more on details. You know, when you look how we lost the championship game last year, we're on the five yard line, you got a fumbled snap. That's basic football. That it didn't matter X's and O's. You know, we had done what we needed to do to get in that position to win that game, but it came down to basic football stuff that, that cost us. The Lions bring back some familiar faces, including quarterback Mason Espinosa. I see a really good mix of veterans, guys that we're bringing back that, you know, have arena football experience, the championship run in them, obviously, and then a bunch of new guys that have honestly really, really impressive resumes. So we're excited to see how that's going to mix, how that's going to blend in camp, and, and see what we get on the other side. One of those impressive resumes belongs to Jeremy Johnson, the former Auburn Tigers quarterback, who will get his first taste of indoor football and expects to compete for the starting job. Take it all one day at a time, you know, learn from Mason as much as I can, and, and you know, whatever coach decides to do, that's what he does, and, you know, I'm looking forward to compete because I'm a competitor and I know it's going to be a good one. That kind of competition is exactly what Gibson wants to see at every position. You know, I bring guys in to beat out the veterans. I don't bring guys in for camp bodies. I don't bring guys in because I owe somebody a favor or, hey, I think you're pretty good. If I bring you in, I think you can start. And I expect them to start over the guys that we have. That makes the veterans raise up. You know, it's going to be very challenging. Uh, coach was telling me that, you know, I don't have as much as room and space, and I got to I got to anticipate throws, and you know, it's a better way to help me get be better as a quarterback. The Lions open preseason camp March 24th. They open the National Arena League season Friday, April 13th, at home against the Lehigh Valley Steelhawks. For the last call, I'm Brendan Robertson, News 3 Sports. Thanks, Brendan. Looking forward to that. Still to come on the last call, we've got the fourth edition of Picks of the Week, March Madness, NIT, and a completely random pick coming up from our so-called experts. Welcome back to Picks of the Week. I'm joined by Sports Director Brendan Robertson and our producer Connor Hackling. So guys, we're either going to make fun of ourselves yeah. or we're going to brag because we're going to tell you who we had for our final four. So Brendan, who'd you have? Got off to a great start. Hot start. I think I was 14-14 and then the Arizona game came on. Ooh. I not only had the Wildcats in the final four, I had them winning it all. Yikes. My rest of my final four. <laughs> North Carolina, Villanova, and Duke. So Connor, you still got your teams? Uh, well, I was on the Arizona train a bit too. I had Arizona in the final four and I had Duke, Carolina, Carolina and Purdue, so those guys are still alive for now. So you're looking okay. I had Virginia, Michigan, Michigan State, and Villanova, and then I've got a Michigan rival there in the final, so we'll see who ends up winning that one. Wow. All right, we did a random basketball pick, so Connor, who'd you pick and why? Uh, I'm going with the Kings to beat the Hawks this week in a massive game for both teams, not because they're any good, but because they both have a chance for the number one pick. Battle of the Tanks, the Hawks. that's right. Exactly. Pillow <laughs> fight. Mm. I'm going with the Georgia Lady Bulldogs in the women's NCAA tournament. Sweet 16 win over Duke. That game would be in Athens. The tournament everybody cares about is obviously the NIT, the not in tournament tournament. I'm going to go with Oklahoma State over Stanford. A lot of people thought that they should have been in the tournament in the first place. They had two wins against Kansas. I think they're going to be pretty angry, especially since Oklahoma lost in the first round. So give me the Cowboys. All right. All right so for our personal pick, 
We get to pick anybody we want to. Brennan, who are you going with? Going back up to the homelands, the Toronto Maple Leafs taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. A huge <laughs> Monday night NHL game, two of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. I got the Leafs. I'm going to stick with hockey. I'm taking the Sharks over the Vegas Knights. That right now is number two and number one with the Sharks in second place. I think the Sharks need to get that last spot to get in the playoffs, so give me the Sharks. little hockey, eh? That's right. Blue line, eh? I'm going to keep it on the hardwood. I'm actually going over to the CIT tournament. Ooh. That's the College <laughs> Insider Tournament. Nice. Wofford Terriers to win the whole thing. The whole thing. Wow. Wofford so not just Terriers. one win. Right. You're going to maul. Champion. South right. Carolina school. I like that. <laughs> We're going to go to Jack with his picks. Thanks, guys. Now, as far as my Final Four goes, it kind of looks like my record in these last call picks. Absolutely disastrous. North Carolina, they got destroyed by Texas A&M earlier today. Michigan State, they forgot how to play the game of basketball. They lost to Syracuse. And don't even get me started about Virginia. But I still have Villanova in, and they're my pick to win it all. So... Fingers crossed. Now, as for my basketball pick, give me the Atlanta Hawks to go on the road and knock off the Golden State Warriors. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm not that crazy. Give me Houston over a rapidly improving Portland Trailblazers team in a tough road game for the Rockets. Now, for my personal pick, I'm pretty sure Brendan's going to give me the side eye next time I see him for this one, but I'm sticking with my boys in Smashville. They got me a win last week. I'm going with them again. I'm taking the Predators to knock off the Toronto Maple Leafs on Friday night in Nashville. Now, let's send things back over to Justin. All right, thanks, Jack. Let's take a look at our last call pick standings and look who's running away with this thing. It's a four game lead for me. I need some more competition, guys. Brendan sits at four and six. Connor, three and seven. He's lost six straight picks since going three and one in the first week. And Jack is still bringing up the rear at two and eight, but has picked up the pace the last two weeks. Eh, maybe. We'll be right back after this, but first, CSU has won 15 straight and continued their best start since 2010. After the break, you're going to see them up close with our Athletes of the Week Award. Get that win. Speaking of which, the CSU baseball team is off to one of the hottest starts in the entire country. The Cougars have won 15 straight games and are off to their best start since 2010. News 3's Carlos Williams went to CSU to check on the Cougars and give them our Athletes of the Week award. Well, we got a little football with our baseball this week when we visited the Columbus State University's baseball team practice. The Cougars are loose, and why not? They're currently riding a 12-game winning streak, and they are undefeated in conference play. Head coach, Greg Appleton. We've had a, off to a real good start. We're ranked fifth in the country right now, and uh, just looking forward to the second half of the season. Uh, we're playing well, and things are going our way, and uh, hopefully the things are going to continue that way. Now, Coach Appleton says the team is not really focusing on his 12-game winning streak. All they want to do is continue to play good baseball in order to put themselves in position for a Peach Belt Conference championship. They continue that hunt in a three-game series this weekend. Well, uh, it, it's a big conference series. We've got Lander coming in. We play on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, it, you know, we're playing at home, so we've got to look to win that series, winning two out of three. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got some nice weather. It's going to start warming up this weekend, so we're looking for folks to come out and watch us play. And so we say good luck and congratulations to the Columbus State University baseball team, our Cody Road Trophies and Jewelers, Athletes of the Week. On the campus of Columbus State University, I'm Carlos Williams for News 3 Sports on your side. Coach was hoping for two out of three. He did them one better. They swept Lander this weekend. And in this week's edition of You Have to See This, Cinderella stories are great for March, but wait till you hear about the team's secret weapon. That's coming up after this for the Loyola Chicago. Basketball is over for all of our area teams, so the game of the week has got to be baseball. And how could we not pick number 13 Auburn versus number 4 Kentucky? It's the first true road series for the Tigers this season, and it comes against a team ranked in the top five. Auburn proved, though, that it can hang with a team like that after taking a 2-1 series from Texas A&M over the weekend. But can they keep it up outside the confines of Plainsman Park? They'll have Casey Mize for at least one game, so you got to like their chances there. And the Wildcats are coming off a weekend where they got swept by Arkansas, so plenty of motivation for them heading into that series. 
And now, the video you have to see this week features the Cinderella of Loyola Chicago, which is heading to the Sweet 16. But the team isn't what you need to see. It's their 98-year-old chaplain, Sister Jean Dolores Schmidt. Sister Jean has been leading the team in prayer for 24 years, and the players say there's usually a scouting report mixed in there as well. Looks like the scouting and prayers are working. The Ramblers are heading to the Sweet 16 after going 33 years without even making a tournament appearance. Thanks so much for watching The Last Call. We're right back here next week at 1130 with all of your sports action, including that huge game between Kentucky and Auburn. I'm your host, Justin Holbrook.